Now at 10 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, the top story in Texas tonight. The legal over Senate Bill 4 continues. And a trio of juveniles referred to as the Little Rascals linked to a bank robbery in Houston. The youngest suspect, just 11 years old. Plus, for a major road near UHV is now complete. And of course, we're looking at uh, where the rain is. Uh, the rain is right about here out in Midland. But this activity is going to be drifting toward us. And so by morning, I think you'll see some thunder shower activity around the crossroads. And it's going to affect your entire day. We'll also have better news for the coming weekend. All that coming up in a moment. And we had Victoria East in action and a star pitcher in Goliad. He's going to play college ball. Hear from both of those guys coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Karina Garcia. Don Brubaker is off tonight. A shocking incident has rattled residents in the Midway area of Lavaca County. On Wednesday night, a resident reported hearing a gunshot, gunshot outside their home along County Road 33-2. The resident discovered their dog had been shot in the stomach. Video footage links a white truck with a loud exhaust and dark rims driving on that county road at the time of the incident. Lavaca County authorities are asking the public to come forward with any information. Sheriff Justin Marr is reminding residents about ongoing scam calls circulating in Victoria County. These calls flaw, falsely claim that warrants have been issued for people who fail to report for jury duty or court appearances. The sheriff urges residents to refrain from sharing personal or financial details with suspicious callers through phone, email or social media. He says their agency never requires that kind of information over the phone. The Victoria Fire Department responded to a car fire today around 530. There were no injuries and by 6 p.m. the fire had been extinguished. VPD assisted with traffic while the fire was put out. Now, after months of construction, Ben Wilson Street between Airline and Red River Streets, which is through the UHV campus, is now fully open to both pedestrian traffic and automobile traffic. Ben Wilson Street through UHV has new grassy medians, traffic signals to allow pedestrians to cross safely, and also a new tower that shows UHV-related events on video screens. After a long wait, many UHV students and staff are happy with the final product. We're so excited that it's open. It's been a long time coming, so uh, we're just excited to have it open, um, to be able to go two ways finally without having all the confusion with just going one way, um, especially with us students being able to cross safely. A new date will be announced for the ribbon cutting ceremony following Thursday's cancellation. And now let's take a look at your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis. Thank you very much. Overnight, this area of low pressure out in the southwest will be rolling toward us and that therefore tomorrow uh, is not going to be a particularly nice day. It's a good day because it's going to rain. It's a bad day if you have plans outdoors because uh, this may actually trigger a few heavy thunderstorms late in the afternoon. The good news is it blows through here on Thursday and by the weekend we should be looking at better weather and we'll have all those weather details coming up for you coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you, Karina. Mac, thank you. A controversial immigration law in Texas is bouncing back and forth between the Supreme Court and a panel of federal appeals judges today. But caught in between is the state's immigrant community who fear that if it is allowed to move forward, many of them could be caught in the crossfire. The migrant crisis on the southern border debated today in court and on the political stage. Texas has a right to defend ourselves, and we will use that authority to declare an invasion and fight back against that invasion. At issue, the Texas state law called SB4 that would give local police the power to arrest people they suspect crossed into the state illegally, superseding federal powers. Yesterday, the U.S. Supreme Court gave Texas the green light to enact the law, but just hours later, the U.S. Appeals Court put it on pause again and fast-tracked a hearing with arguments today. The Appeals Court chief judge seemed unconvinced Texas should have the power that has always rested with the federal government. This is the first time, it seems to me, that uh, a state has claimed that they have the right to remove illegal aliens. I mean, this is not something that just that a power that historically has been exercised by states. But the attorney representing Texas argued SB4 would allow the state to quickly address the influx of migrants. 
Biden's Justice Department claimed SB4 would sow chaos at the border, promote racial profiling, and burden local law enforcement, something some authorities in Texas admit they're concerned about. There is no training associated with it. We are unfamiliar with federal immigration law. It's going to exhaust resources. Though others, like the Laredo Police Department chief, say it's an easy transition. Somebody gets stopped with DWI, person does not, is not here illegally. What happens? We arrest them. The person is not from here. What do they do? They call customs. They call Border Patrol. Whatever the outcome of today's appeals court hearing, the Texas law is almost certainly to end up back at the Supreme Court, which, despite yesterday's action, still has not weighed in officially on the merits of the state law or whether it can stand. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Now, Senate Bill 4 has raised the alarm for many migrant communities across the state, prompting the border city of Laredo to address concerns surrounding this controversial immigration law. Despite back and forth verdicts, Laredo's mayor says he has the intention to continue working with Customs and Border Patrol. The mayor maintained that there will be a country of laws, but stressed the great uncertainty the bill poses to Hispanic communities across Texas. Laredo Police Chief Miguel Rodriguez also addressed the department's position. Last night I got a call uh, from a friend and asked, hey, my mom is here on a traveling visa, is not here on a working visa. Am I going to get stopped? Again, I don't even know the difference, right? Uh, we're not immigration officers. We need to understand that. And our officers need to understand that, that we need that training because there's a lot of things that happen through an immigration status that we as officers have never dealt with. The chief wants to subdue any potential fears or concerns, saying the law is not meant to round up people or ask for a person's immigration status without a cause. Leading us to your beer poll tonight, you can scan that QR code right there on your screen to vote. The question is, do you think Senate Bill 4 will promote racial profiling, yes or no? According to our results tonight, it looks like 31% stand at yes and the remaining 69% stand at no. Thank you for voting tonight. Now, Governor Greg Abbott hosted sheriffs from across the state at the Capitol in Austin today, including Victoria County Sheriff Justin Marr. This comes as Governor Greg Abbott received a letter from over 100 sheriffs across multiple counties regarding conflicting rulings on Senate Bill 4. This new Texas law right now is on hold after a three judge panel hearing of the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals ended without a ruling today. A major charter bus company has agreed to stop busing migrants to New York City until a civil lawsuit is concluded. On Wednesday, Roadrunner Charters entered the agreement with New York. Roadrunner is one of the bus companies that took part in Governor Greg Abbott's strategy to send migrants to Democrat-led sanctuary cities. New York City filed a civil lawsuit against 17 bus companies in December, asking for at least $708 million total from all the bus companies. The New York City City Mayor's Office says Governor Abbott confirmed he bust around 33,000 asylum seekers since the spring of 2022. In Harris County, a group of boys suspected of robbing a Wells Fargo bank in Houston are now in custody. The FBI is calling them the little rascals. They are 11, 12 and 16 year old boys charged locally with robbery by threat. The Houston County Sheriff's Office says the boys passed a threatening note to a teller. They were believed to be armed, though they did not present a weapon and they got away with an undisclosed amount of cash. If the allegations are proven true, they could face probation until they turn 18 or juvenile prison until they turn 19. A new report from the FBI shows that crime rates in the U.S. are actually dropping. The new data is from approximately 13,000 law enforcement agencies that police more than 80 percent of the U.S. The FBI says crime declined significantly, significantly in the fourth quarter of last year in almost every category, including murder, violent crime, property crime. And Attorney General Merrick Garland also issued a statement praising the drop in crime. The FBI will release its final data on 2023 crime in October. Here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Lavaca wave. The Calhoun County Commissioner's Court signed two new law enforcement grant programs. They also approved the closure of a public beach for a private event. Plus, Calhoun County's cook-off team takes home third place in the ribs category at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. You can read these stories and more at the PortLavacaWave.com. 
Now remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click that notification bell. For now, stay with us. A fourth officer from a Mississippi County's goon squad was sentenced today for torturing two black men last year. That's coming up on 25 News Now at 5. Also ahead, the White House announced their most ambitious plan to eliminate planet warming emissions from cars. A fourth former Mississippi sheriff deputy was sentenced for his part in torturing two black men. Christian Denmon was sentenced today to 40 years in federal prison. A second officer was sentenced to 17.5 years hours earlier. Two other former deputies were sentenced yesterday and another two will learn their fates Thursday. All six white men played guilty to federal charges in August. They admitted to subjecting Michael Corey Jenkins and Eddie Terrell Parker to numerous acts of racist torture in January of 2023. This after a neighbor complained the two were staying in a home with a white woman. A Lewiston, Maine bowling alley that was one of two scenes in a mass shooting last year is set to reopen. Just in time, recreation was closed since October of last year after a single gunman into the building and shot and killed seven people. An eighth person later died from their injuries at the hospital and 10 others were killed by the shooter that same night, bringing the total to 18 lives lost. Since the mass shooting, Just in Time's owner have worked to repair and renovate their small business. And we have eight angels watching and guiding us along the way. I mean, every day I talk, we talk to them, we come in, and they're cheering for us. They're our biggest cheerleaders for sure. Other changes like security cameras and a new door are also added. The business hopes to reopen their doors sometime this spring. The Federal Reserve says they still expect to cut their key interest rate three times in 2024, despite signs of inflation remaining elevated. Chair Jerome Powell says the surprising pickup in inflation in January and February had not fundamentally changed the Fed's picture of the economy. It still expects inflation to continue to cool, though more gradually now. The recent high inflation readings follow six months of steady slowdowns in price increases. 
The White House announced today a series of rules. They say they will avoid over 7 billion tons of global warming carbon emissions over the next 30 years. A major move just announced from the Environmental Protection Agency requiring the car industry to reduce pollution across their entire fleet in an attempt to push the car industry to make more electric vehicles. Today marks a historic win for public health, for the environment, and for the future of our country. One mile at a time, we're cleaning our air, we're protecting public health, and we're creating good paying American jobs. The EPA announcing that vehicle emissions standards for cars built starting 2027 up until 2032 will reduce U.S. emissions by over 7 billion metric tons for over 30 years. It's all in an effort, they say, to reduce deaths, health care costs, and over $60 billion in costs for fuel, maintenance, and repairs by reducing tiny particulates and other pollution from burning gasoline, in addition to reducing plant warming emissions. That means less heart disease. That means longer lives. Clean cars is really all about saving kids. Clean cars will help save our kids. The Biden administration tapping the brakes a little to give manufacturers more wiggle room. We gave the automobile industry more flexibility to achieve those environmental goals. Sales of electric vehicles have slowed, so automakers didn't think they needed to reach stricter standards set a year ago. Giving the automobile industry more flexibility to choose different combinations to achieve our environmental goals actually gives their customers more choice. The White House says that car manufacturers will have many options to get to the emission limits it is requiring, and that includes a combination of battery electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids, and super-efficient gas-powered engines. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. President Biden revealed an $8.5 billion investment in semiconductor chips in Arizona today. The funding will help support construction, expansion, or modernization of facilities in Arizona, Ohio, New Mexico, and Oregon. The White House estimates that nearly 30,000 jobs will be created across the four states. Now here's a look at some of the top headlines you can read in the Quero record. All remaining debt related to the improvements to the Frayer Ag Center are cleared. Plus, the Dewitt County Appraisal District reminds businesses to render their taxable property. Read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. Well, good evening, everybody. We're looking at 64 degrees. We had a little sprinkle activity today. You probably felt it. Very moist, very humid. Uh, but now that humidity is going to start mixing up. That's why we're looking at rain for tomorrow. We did get up to 70 degrees, and we haven't been below average temperatures in the entire spring that I can think of. Anyway, coming up for tomorrow, an alert day because I expect some heavy rain. We'll talk about that coming up after this.
Well, good evening, everybody. For tomorrow, Thursday, uh, you probably have plans uh, getting stuff done, right? Well, we may have to deal with uh, quite a bit of rain uh, for tomorrow. Here it is already organizing right there in Midland. And that's basically an area of low pressure down here that's spinning uh, all that moisture up into our area. So the computer models and we all feel that by sunrise, there'll be some rain activity around the area, sh showers. And then by afternoon, we may have some severe thunderstorms to deal with. We'll be talking about that coming up in the, the next few minutes because that's the big story as far as we're concerned. We are looking at today. There was a chance that we could have gotten some activity going, but we didn't because the clouds never broke and therefore we just got that light rain. But this is tomorrow. Tomorrow, the uh, severe weather outlook includes a slight risk of severe weather in this area from Austin to the crossroads and back to Houston. So we'll see how that evolves. And the maximum heating uh, will be three, four, five o'clock in the afternoon. So if you were uh, start off and it's not raining, well, that's good, but it doesn't mean it's gonna be like that all day. Uh, so we watch for that. Here's Future Tracker, and this is what uh, we can do. We can go from Wednesday. You can see how there will be shower activity tomorrow in the morning, right about there. And then all of a sudden, the stuff starts getting heavier as it comes in from the west, and we start seeing bigger thunderstorms around this area, okay? And then we're there on Thursday, and then Thursday night, the big bloom will occur basically slightly to our northeast. Therefore, we will get some, but looks like Houston, um, Brazoria, Galveston, they'll get uh, even heavier activity, uh, probably in the two to three inch range. So we are looking, our, you know, the things I look at tell me uh, over an inch of rain here in the crossroads. So that would be a significant amount of rainfall. And if you have an open roof, that's a real bad problem. If you're pouring concrete tomorrow morning, that, that's another bad problem uh, because we're going to be looking at showers on and off all day. Good news, by Friday, this all clears up. It's going to delay you one day. And then by Saturday and Sunday, we actually have a pretty nice couple of days coming up for the crossroads, as a matter of fact. Uh, here are, uh, let's see, the rain, well, the rainfall totals didn't come up. But here's what we're looking at. Here's the area of low pressure aloft. That's the one that's going to be crossing across the southwest and then moving over Texas. And so you can see right here on Thursday, we're right in front of it. We're in the area of maximum lifting, and that's going to pull all that moisture that we've had around here up high and then trigger off that rain activity. Good news is that by Friday, it does pull away. We pick up a northwest wind, and that's going to dry us up and give us some good sunshine and some fairly nice weather over the weekend. I'm trying to make up for last weekend, which was not so good. Uh, then in the long term, we're looking at uh, Sunday, Monday, uh, the next frontal system rolling through our area uh, with possibly a little bit more chance of rain. So here's what uh, the uh, day planner looks like for those of you in Port Lavaca. Yes siree, I got thunderstorms for you. High temperature only about 73. Southerly, or rather easterly winds pretty much all day long. Thunderstorms out there in Cuero and all the way out to Gonzales and Nixon. Uh, we're looking at thunder shower activity and a high of only 72. So on the cool side of things, but it's an alert day. That means that all of you are going to be affected by this rain. And then Friday with a northwest wind, mostly sunny, and the weekend's looking good. We'll watch and wait to see what that Monday system does. That's your seven-day forecast. We're reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that and put Crossroads today on your phone. Here's Zach with baseball. That's right. The Titans trying to stay undefeated in district play. We also had a star in Goliad sign to go play college ball. I'll have all that coming up in sports.
District showdown over at Riverside Stadium with Victoria East taking on Gregory Portland and Gregory Portland jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the top half of the first inning. Then Victoria East responded with seven runs in their half of the first inning and those were the only runs scored in the game and it is all they needed as Gage Goldman settles down and goes the distance, allowing just two earned runs on the day as the Titans get the 7-3 win. The other run was unearned. I did not get to see him score any runs because they scored them all in the first inning, but I did get to see Gage pump the zone full of strikes. He had it going in the impressive effort. Uh, I kind of got punched in the mouth the first inning, but I just remember the approach, remember that my defense has my back, and just went to work. I know I don't have to do too much because my defense is amazing. Uh, the offense is amazing. Came out seven, inning, seven runs in the first inning, but, you know, that's how I don't have to work as hard. It helps a ton. It helps to know that, you know, my team's still fighting even after getting punched in the mouth the first inning, but, uh, yeah, it's amazing. All right, Gage gets the win. The Titans get Gregory Portland again this Friday at Whataburger Field in Corpus Christi. Another week, another Goliad Tiger signing to go play college ball. And today we had an all around athlete sign to play baseball. That was Colby Rosenquist, who will be taking his talents to Southern Arkansas Tech University. He was able to make this happen with his teammates and, of course, family there to watch him. And speaking of family, he says his father played college baseball at a different school in Arkansas, and it sounded like everything Colby wanted in his new home. Dad played college baseball in Arkansas as well, so he told me that he liked it a lot. And I went on the visit, and then it's a lot like Goliad. It's real small. So, yeah, I really liked it. This is something I've always dreamed of since I was started playing four years old at T-Ball. So this is a dream come true, and I can't wait till it happens. Just to name some of his accolades, he was a starter in baseball at Goliad all four years. He was an all-state safety in football and took the quarterback duties this year as the Tigers not only won a district title, but made it all the way to the regional quarters. District play begins this week in baseball. Goliad hoping to have a big year. Throwing a no hitter is tough and throwing a perfect game is even harder. And for Quero star Carly Pullen, she's done both this year. She was last week's athlete of the week because of her perfect game and last night she threw a no hitter as the Quero girl shut out Lavernia 12 to nothing. By the way, she did this on the road. The number four ranked Quero girls have pushed that winning streak up to 11 games. Another great pitching performance from a great athlete, Edna's Jashanti Guetta. According to the Jackson County Herald Tribune, she struck out eight batters while also getting two hits of her own and the Cowgirls win over Industrial and a score that's kind of hard to believe. Hallettsville, they pitched a shutout. They're ranked in Class 3A for a reason. They beat Rice 21-0. to zero. All right, well, that is it for your sports. Karina, back to you. Thanks, Zach, and stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 10, we're going to take a last look at your weather with Mac. Plus, tomorrow is a very sweet day. It's National California Strawberry Day.
If you want to become an astronaut, now's your chance. NASA is mm. accepting applications, but you must have a master's degree in a STEM field from an accredited institution. Uh, I guess we're out. Yeah. I know. Never mind. Speak for yourself. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I forgot you're a your renaissance man. Yes, sir. Applicants must also have a minimum of three years of related professional experience and the ability to successfully complete NASA's long duration flight physical. Selected astronauts will join NASA's Artemis program, which is preparing to land the first woman and the next man on the moon. There are also plans to travel to Mars. Huh. Yeah. Now, Christie is auctioning off a rare 17 karat diamond ring. It's got the highest possible ratings for clarity and transparency. This paracut rock also has a D color rating, which means it's completely colorless. And it even comes with a custom Harry Winston Navy blue case. Set in platinum, Christie is predicting the ring will go for between 700 grand and a cool million. So mm, out of my budget, unfortunately, colorless. right out of oh, my budget. Darling, you're worth every cent. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an auction, so you could get lucky and you could get it for a lower price. Unfortunately, I will be backing away from this one. I'm sure they'll be bidding the number up higher mm -hmm, and higher sure. and higher. <laughs> and you know, yeah, I wanted to be an astronaut too. But then I ran into Algebra 2 uh, and said, oh, maybe not. <laughs> you know, I never wanted to be an astronaut because there was this one movie where you just, you know, they, they show you the test. Oh, the, they just the, go the, fast. The and centrifugal. Oh, that's so where scary. Where she almost like, like fell off the spaceship yeah. and floated. Away. Dude, I don't know what that movie's called. It was the scariest thing. I, I think The seen. Martian. I don't know. I yeah, don't that was, so. that, that was <laughs> We'll circle back to that. Yeah, we'll circle back. <laughs> Hey, folks, we've got rain for tomorrow. I know you've got work to do, but I don't think you're going to get much done outdoors. You might be dodging thunder showers, uh, but I expect to see even some severe weather by tomorrow afternoon and evening. The good news is that by Friday it all clears out, and we do have a good-looking weekend coming up. Thank you, Mac. And tomorrow is National California Strawberry Day, the day typically falls with the first day of spring and more than 80% of the strawberries consumed in North America are actually grown in California. That's right. So go Cali. <laughs> I remember Oxnard, uh, Ventura County, miles and miles and miles of strawberries. <laughs> thank you, Mac. And thank you for joining us for 25 News Now at 10. Don't forget, join the Sunrise Crew.